Hi again. Uh, here we are to continue talking about React Native and um, stateful components. Okay. Um, in our last video, we uh, we created a timer here, and we've got the button set up so it toggles between run and pause. Right. So now we want to get the timer to actually you know keep track of time. Right. So roughly, what we're going to do is we're going to keep track of the time displayed here in this time property on state, okay? And what we'll do is we'll use a JavaScript um, set interval to, um, to you know, run the timer, right? So every, every interval will update our time, okay? Um, this is a little bit complicated because we'll need to, um, you know, it, you can keep track of time in a few ways. Um, what I want to do is, and I, and I think this is a little more accurate, is I want to take the difference. So, so we'll we'll get the the time, the last time will be the time that we um, that it was when we started the timer, and then we'll subtract that from the current time to get the difference in in the time, and then we'll use that to display here, right? So, um, so you know we're going to get the difference in time between when we started the timer or when we updated the timer and the current time. And then we'll call um, our timer method periodically, like maybe something a little less than a second. Because if we call it on a second, then if the computer's a little bit slow, then you know it might go a little longer than a second, and then we kind of miss our update. Um, but if we call it just under a second, then um, you know we can keep the one second times in, in kind of in check, right? And they should be a little more accurate. So uh, what are we going to do? Um, so we've got our button here, but we'll need a couple methods. So let's block in a few things. So what we'll need is we'll need an update method. Okay, so I'll just call this update, right? And we'll just say update time here. Okay, if our timer is running, okay? And then we'll need maybe a method to uh, start timer, right? So we'll say start timer here. And then we'll need one to uh, pause timer. Okay. So then we'll pause our timer here. Okay. And later we might want to format our time because you can see here I've got you know seconds, colon, and minutes. So uh, you know maybe we'll have a function for that just to make it easy. So we'll say format time. Okay. Um, Let's make this uh, minutes, colon, seconds, right? Okay, so something like that, right? And so this will probably take in the time value and then return a string or something with this kind of format, okay? So uh, so how are we going to do this? Well, let's talk a little bit about set interval. So let's do some experiments with that, right? So set interval is a method that um, creates a timer that it runs internally on you know in JavaScript and will call back or or call a callback um, at time intervals right okay so you set an interval and then we call the 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 callback at the interval okay so how does that work well um, why don't we do that in start timer here okay so if we're starting the timer what we'll do is we'll set the state from on or set the on property of state to true right. So we'll do this dot set state on is true. Okay, so we'll need to do that. And then we'll need to um, start our interval. Okay, now the thing about the interval is that um, it keeps running no matter what. So if we create an interval and then our class disappears or you know something happens, then the, the timer still runs, right? So what we need to do is we may, need to make sure that we clear the interval at some point. So if we ever have to get rid of this component or we want to stop the timer, we're going to clear the interval to do that, okay? Um, in order to clear the interval, every interval has an ID. So we need to, we need to call a method called clear interval and um, include the ID, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to make a variable up here. It won't actually be part of state. Okay, it'll be something different. So we'll say this dot timer ID, and I'll, you can just set this to anything. I'll just make it uh, zero for now, right? And when we start the timer, what we'll do is we'll say this dot 
timer ID equals set interval. Okay, so set interval is going to return an ID. And then, you know, we'll store it here. And, uh, oh, pardon me, and then when we, when we pause the timer, we'll want to clear this ID, okay? So, uh, so what we'll do is we'll say something like this. We'll say clear interval this dot timer ID, okay? And this is okay, um, but actually, you know, if our component was destroyed, at some point or you know removed from the screen or removed from memory for some reason if it had a timer the timer would actually continue running so we want to make sure when the time when this component gets put away that the timer also is cleaned up so what we're going to do is i'm going to actually add another method here called um, clear timer okay and what we'll do is we'll take this clear interval with the timer ID and we'll put it inside clear timer and then what we'll do is we'll call clear timer from pause timer so that's kind of nice right so we can just call this method here and that seems like a little more work but the reason we're doing this is because we're also going to add a method and I'm going to put it up here at the top I'm going to call this um, what is it it's um, component will unmount Okay, and you got to get the case correct here. So it's got to be component uppercase W uppercase um, U for unmount. Okay, so component will unmount happens when the component gets put away or destroyed, right? So when the component it re is removed from the screen or removed from memory for some reason, then it gets a message called component will unmount. You know, hey, if you need to clean up anything inside this component, do it here. And what we can do is we can call clear timer right actually you know what this should have been this dot clear timer let's make that this dot clear timer just to make it super clear right and I'll do it down here on pause timer okay so there we go right so now when our component gets cleaned up it will clear the timer um, when you pause the timer we can also call clear timer we actually have some more work to do here in pause timer right and then when we start the timer we'll set an interval and we'll get the timer ID okay so there's some boilerplate code for working with the timer let's take another look at set interval okay so what does set interval do so set interval um, takes two properties it takes a or two parameters right it takes a callback so I'll just write the ES6 short function callback there right and then it also takes the um, the interval right so if I type in 1000 that means one second. So every one second, it should call this callback, okay, or execute the code inside this function block every 1,000 milliseconds. Now, the timer isn't super accurate, so when we put 1,000 milliseconds here, this could be, you know, 1,020 milliseconds. It could be 1,100 milliseconds. It could be 1,002 milliseconds. You know, it, it's going to be one about 1,000 milliseconds, but not perfect. So, you know, we might want our timer to update maybe a little faster, like maybe every 500 milliseconds, right? Um, you know, but you could just type in 1,000 for now. We'll adjust that later, okay? So now the code here, what are we going to do when our timer updates? So inside here, I'm going to put a line return there between the curly braces. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to call the update method. And I'd like to use this as a place where we can update our timer, okay? So what we'll do is we'll say this dot update, okay? So we'll call update. And then when we update the time, this won't be complete yet. We're going to do a little bit of trickery with the date object to get the, our timer to be super accurate. Um, but for right now, what we'll do is we'll, we'll go into update here and we'll, we'll need to update the time. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll call this dot set state. Okay. And this time we're going to update the time. Now we don't have to update both of these. We only need to include a JavaScript object with just the properties that are going to get changed. And in our case, we're going to change the time to some other value, right? Now, like I said, we're going to do a little more with this with the times 
um, later. But for just for right now, just to see it working and see the timer running, what we'll do is we'll just add one to this value, okay? So this will be a rough timer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the time to this dot uh, state dot time plus equals one. Okay, or you could do plus plus, right? Okay, well, I'll just do plus equals. It's a little, a little more clear, right? And um, so remember, when we change state, the component will automatically re-render, right? So it'll see that you changed state, and then it will call the render method and draw the component again. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to see the value for time here. Now, we're going to lose our formatting for now, but we'll come back and, and fix that later. So um, what, what I'll do is I'll take the, the text here, and instead of displaying this sort of default text, I'll put an expression in here, and we'll say this dot state dot time, right? So every time our timer or the time changes on state, then our time timer will re-render and uh, show the time value here. Okay, so the last thing we need to do to maybe make this a, as a test, right, is to actually call start timer to run the timer. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll say uh, this dot start timer, and I'll just put that inside the constructor here. So just for a test here, just to see the timer running. Um, we'll just call it from the constructor and then if we see the numbers increasing here then we kind of know that that timer is working and then we can go in and um, get the timer to stop and add the other features right so I'll just call start timer here as a good test so let's go back to our app and uh, refresh it and there we can see oh two three four right so it's kind of running the button won't do anything yet right so we're gonna fix that later so anyway thanks for watching and then I hope that that um, kind of illustrates how um, state works right um,